I remember in the early 1990s, when I first learned about clicker training, I was practicing out of sight stays in an obedience hall with other competitors. We were in a closet to tell you the truth. I clicked my clicker to mark for my dog. She was correct because I, I had a mirror. I could see she was. And then she came running in because I click my clicker, the behavior is over, right? I reinforce her. And as I'm walking back to position, I'm, I'm thinking something doesn't feel right. Hi, I'm Susan Garrett. Welcome to Shape by Dog. That was my earliest experiences with, with using a clicker and I wasn't necessarily wrong. However, training a behavior that's stationary is going to take a lot longer to grow that dog's understanding. It wasn't until probably 10 years later when I really started working with Bob and Mary and Bailey that I heard the phrase that you want to mark for position and reward for behavior. And that's led me to the topic of today's podcast. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was intending on doing part three of our distance series today, and I realized there was a big gap that I had to fill in. And that is the topic of today's podcast, which is location specific reinforcer markers. It's a big, long title. And honestly, I was using it long before I had ever heard that phrase. And honestly, it's something that I'd been using quite a while until somebody said, Hey, the protection world has started doing what you're doing and they're calling it location specific reinforcer markers. I'm like, well, that sounds like a really cool title. Whoever came up with that one, what they are, they are words that tell my dog you are right, but or qualifying what's going to happen after. So it's not a, but as much as an, and, uh, stick with me on this one. So going back to that dog that I was reinforcing with the mark from the closet, she was getting information that what she was doing was correct, but the reinforcement I gave her actually was rewarding her for leaving position. And so the idea would be a way to mark her position, but reinforce her in position because it doubles the value, which when you're doubling the value, you're growing the under understanding much more efficiently, which means it doesn't take as long for the dog to understand exactly what you want. So I started what is now known as a location specific reinforcer marker back in the mid nineties with my dog buzz, when I was wanting to reinforce start lines. And what I would do is I would plant a toy behind him. And sometimes I would release him for the jump in agility. And other times I would tell him, look back and his toy was there on the ground. And I would tell him, get it. You know, he couldn't just spin around and say, no, you said break. I'm not going to take the jump. I'm going to take the toy. That word look back. It told him what you're doing right now, holding position without paddling your feet is correct. Behavior is correct. It also told him you are now going to get reinforced. It also told him where to look for the reinforcement. So I could have said, now I didn't do it back then, but today if I wanted to release him forward, I would just say the word of the obstacle. And that would have still been a location specific reinforcer marker because I would not give the name of the obstacle if what he was doing wasn't correct. So when I say jump or tunnel, whatever the first obstacle on a course is, I'm telling my dog what you're doing and how you're doing it is correct. I'm thrilled with, with it, which is why I caution people to be really, really present when they're releasing dogs at a start line, because you're giving them a massive reinforcement. So I'm telling them what you're doing is correct. I'm telling them what the name of the reinforcement is. And obviously they're staring right at it. So where it is now by giving markers like this, what you're doing is you're creating clarity with your dog, but the marker word creates this unbelievable transfer of value. We all know that our dogs have preferences to reinforcement, correct? Like there'll be dogs that you have that they love their food. And if you said tug, they would go, mm, yeah, I really, really don't want to do that. But you can 
Now, this is providing that the dogs will tug. You can to ask your dog to tug. And when they get really, really good tugging, you could then say cookie and reward the tugging with a cookie because it's telling the dog what you're doing right now. You can stop. It is good. And this is the reward you will get for it. Okay. It's far, far more information than continuing to say what typically people say. Okay. Okay. Means this. And okay means that it's a break from what you're doing. Okay. Let's go do something else. Okay. A cookie's coming. Okay. I'm going to throw the toy. It's far more specific. So I started with swagger. I actually introduced even more specificity to this in that I started using the word search, which meant you will look for reinforcement on the floor. And what I found for that, especially a dog like swagger, he would then know immediately that to leave the position. And often I was doing something I wanted him to reload like a perch skill. You could leave the position, grab the cookie, come back to work. All right. What you're doing right now is correct. You are going to get reinforced and here's where you look for your reinforcement. So when I raise my dogs, I make sure I build in massive value for swimming. Now, some dogs it's easy. Other dogs, it takes a little bit more work, but all of my dogs end up being possessed by the water. They just vibrate at the thought of swimming. Now this is a massive reinforcement. And so here's another big bonus win in, within this podcast. Don't just let your dog steal that. It's huge. It could be the biggest reinforcement for many dogs. So when you're using that as a location specific reinforcement, it brings amazing value to the behavior that you're reinforcing, right? So I will use it for building drive for my agility behaviors. If I'm working obedience outside, I may use it as a, you've done really great heel work. So instead of saying, good boy, I will then, I'll mark with yeah, swimming, boom, they're off. There's nothing. There's nothing more powerful than that. Now, my young dog, this, she loves to chase her mother. And so I started by, if you give me great positional work by my side and I've built it. So maybe I'll ask for a spin at my side. Maybe I'll ask for a sit or a down. Then I will do, I'm going to make that a little bit louder because she can hear me. You might be, not be able to. That means you can now chase dogs. Means chase dogs. So if I wanted her to tug, for example, you come in, you've walked by my side, I would then go get it. Here's my toy, get it. And she would have to tug. And in the midst of tugging, I could then go. So what I've done now is I've transferred that amazing value to run into the toy. So here are some of the location specific uh, reinforcements that I use. I've told you search means you can leave position and look for a food on the ground. Now it could be more than one food, but it will be a piece of food that I have thrown. Most of the time, my dogs have seen that. The exception would be if I've thrown a handful of food in the grass. And in that case, I may continue to say the word search to get them continuing to look. So it's something that they've seen me throw. If it is a piece of food I'm bringing into them, and it's your choice is always in play for my dogs. So as I'm bringing a cookie in, they can't leave position to get that cookie. I'll bring it in. And as I bring it close to their face, I'll say, get it. And they can eat the cookie. Now I will also put cookies in a bowl, cookies in a bowl. You could just use the word bowl. I don't use cookies in the bowl that often. So I too will use the word, get it. Now I could put throw cookies on the ground and cookie in the bowl. If I say, get it, you can't get the cookie on the ground. You have to go for the cookie in the bowl. If I have a cookie coming to your face and I say, get it, you don't get this one and then grab the one on the floor because I didn't say search. Super, super important. Things I'm delivering right to my dog, I tend to say, get it. So if I'm bringing a toy right into their face, I tend to say, get it. Couple exceptions to that one. And, and I will share those with you. If I want my dog to retrieve a dead retrieve, I will say, bring me. That means fly out, grab it, fly back, bring me. Here's a, a location specific marker that 
can save your dog's life. Normally at a door, I'll say break. Break means go out and find your own reinforcement. Now, if I'm saying break from a crate and I'm standing still, that reinforcement should be with me. But if I'm saying break and you can go outside in the backyard and do your business and do whatever you want, you find your own reinforcement on the word break. If I'm releasing my dogs in the building and there's a chance that there's cars in the parking lot, I won't say break. I will say wit wit. And that means come into my side. So yes, you are correct for holding position. Yes, you can earn reinforcement. And here's where you're going to get your reinforcement. Wit wit, come into my side. Often while they're there, I will give them a cookie for walking with me at my side. I don't want them to just take off and run. All right. So here's an agility where I've grown this. And I've heard that Shade Weitzel in, in protection work has really taken off with this. And I think she's got like 20 different location specific markers. In agility with my youngest dog, what I've done is my cues that mean turn to the right are cues that are lower in uh, tone. So it would be like rai rai or rrr. Those are check, check. Those are three cues that mean turn to the right. And so what I did is when I reinforced her for turning right, I always use her frizzer. So she loves her frizzer. And so I put the word frizza, frizza, which sounds it's low, low tempo frizza. It means you're always going to get reinforcement to the right is always with a frizza. Reinforcement to the left. Another favorite toy is cow tug. Now, I have recently started to go sichi, so sichi, cow tug, because my cues to the left are chi chi and li 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 li. So those are two of my cues that mean turn to the left. And so she knows it was an easy understanding for this to learn turns to the right because frizza were always the reinforcement for anything to the right, and gt or or sichi, cow tug, cow tug, or Cut dog is always to the left or CT, CT, CT is always for your reinforcement to the left. So this is the first time I've done specific toys for specific activities in agility. Most important thing about these specific markers is I strongly recommend you guys have a tone that sounds different than the other ones. So break should sound different than search should sound different than, should sound different than, wait, wait. So they should have unique sounds that in a high arousal state, the dog will know immediately what you want. There's no confusion, right? So let's just introduce a couple of these. Here's what I'd like you to do. Let's introduce search, put a cookie in your hand and put it out in front of your dog, say the word search, drop the cookie on the ground, do that a few times. And then if you haven't played It's Your Choice, you need to start playing It's Your Choice. We'll put a link in the show notes. Pick up a cookie, start to bring it towards your dog's face. And if they try to steal it, of course, they're savvy with It's Your Choice. They shouldn't try and steal it. If they do, just cover your hand around it and wait. When they stop trying to steal it, bring it back. And when they hold position, tell them, get it or whatever cues you want. So search and get it, search and get it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put that cookie in a bowl, bring the bowl close to your dog and say, get it. Now, get it means they can leave position now and get the cookie out of the bowl, right? You want to then build up so that, and you can do this with a toy if you want, guys, pick your own location specific cues. So maybe you want your dogs to come flying into position on your right or your left, and you want to use a ball, a tennis ball, or Frizza, whatever it is you want to use, be very specific and very consistent. And I strongly encourage you to have different tones. So in preparation for what we're going to do next, if your dog loves toys, then start to name one toy on the ground. It's going to be called this. So if I say frizza, then this will always pick up the frizza off the floor. I normally don't say frizza unless I throw it, but if I say frizza, she'll look for the frizza. All right. So we want your dogs to understand what search means, what get it from a bowl. 
just use bowl. If I was going to grow that behavior, I would use something like bucket means get it from the bowl, make up your own. So we're going to have search bucket. And if your dog loves toys, then the name of one toy that will help you for when we get to our next podcast episode, which is going to be talking about distance work. Okay. So don't be overwhelmed. If you're new to dog training, location specific cues, the most important thing is you are consistent. You never release a dog from position unless you love what they're doing. And if you're going to use a word, please don't have it be a word that you use throughout your day. Like, okay, 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 okay. Build value, grow understanding, use different words. A cue a dog knows. So if my dog's in a sit and I say down, that is a location specific reinforcement. What you're doing is correct right now. Here's where you're going to earn reinforcement is by changing position. Does that mean I run in and reward the down right away? No, it could mean yes. Could also mean you're in the middle of a behavior chain and we will give you reinforcement later, but that's what we want. Names that the dog knows in agility, obstacle names are releases and location specific telling the dog, here's your reinforcement. You get to do a tunnel now or whatever. Okay. So just start adding one or two. And all I wanted everyone to hear this podcast for is to recognize the power of harnessing what your dog finds most valuable and put it into a known word. And by having it as a known release, it is permission to partake in that activity, which is bringing that unbelievable value all the way through you. Super, super important. Have a go. Come on over to YouTube. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes for you and your dog. I'll see you next time right here on Shape by Dog. This is where we get all vulnerable and say, are you a subscriber yet? Now I can't get more vulnerable, but she can. Can you show them your belly? Yeah, she's asking. Please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't ever miss another video. And if you're already a subscriber, hold on. (laughs) Mechanics are everything in dog training, but that's for you. Go ahead, give yourself another reward. Show them your belly.